Greetings, welcome to the Prime Directive. I'm your host, Jeff Ago. My co-host as always, Chris. Say hi, Chris. Hello. So today's sci-fi uh, movie, Pandorum. Pandorum. Do you have Pandorum? Do I you might. Have the shakes? I might now. Do you have somebody constantly telling you the side effects of the shakes? <laughs> If I keep telling you the symptoms, yes. it's gonna start you'll having start having them. them. Yeah, it it starts with breathing. <laughs> Shit! Shit! <laughs> oh man! You ever remember really liking this movie? Mm -hmm. It's still alright for me. I don't mm -hmm. hate it. Mm -hmm. As we looked it up, uh, same producers and stuff of Mortal Kombat and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but Paul W. S. Anderson didn't direct this, mm -hmm. and you know sometimes he does gold. Mm -hmm. And I think if he had done this, it would have been gold because when that creature threw the staff to the other guy so they could have a fair fight, that was kind of cool. Mortal Kombat music would have hit. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been to seem dramatic. Yeah, I think if we well, just played Mortal exactly. Kombat. Exactly, a yeah. little bit more of that kind of music. Mm -hmm. time. Even Alien vs. Predator had that thematic battle at the end. But I was <laughs> like, yep, this is the Mortal Kombat director. That's how I figure these things out. <laughs> I think this movie was just a bit, uh, a bit scattered. Um, I think it was there was a lot of things going on, and uh, it maybe could have cut things down a bit or, or focused on some of the more interesting elements, or at least that I thought were the more interesting elements. Um, the couple twists at the end I thought were were fairly compelling. What drove me nuts was sort of the how they filmed all the action and stuff. It was oh. very shaky. Like, shaky. Like you just up. can't really see what's going on, which is what happens when your creatures aren't actually that freaky looking, and you don't have any con uh, confidence in like your choreography or whatever. You just do quick, rapid, shaky cuts all around. But at least it was practical. It was practical. <laughs> Like the the movie was trying to go off the strength of like a mystery of like oh what happened we have to mm -hmm. discover this thing there's definitely horror elements in this mm -hmm. um, there's definitely sci-fi horror but like you know I find even with the detective story like once you've watched it and you see like how everything played out it's just like you guys made some jumps like it didn't all add up and like mm -hmm. things like that happen a lot where this is just like can you do a rewatch of this right away now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the, the building up the intrigue of what's going on was done well enough. Like, mm -hmm. we saw the first guy who's obviously dead or whatever that was hanging mm -hmm. when he got out. Um, and then the second guy is like, oh, this is a trap. I've seen it before. Well, what was the trap? <laughs> like, You're the retraction crew, right? No. No. I'm team five. You just woke up? Six or eight hours ago. So you know what the fuck's going on? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You know as much as me, man. Yeah, who was trapping who there? Yeah. Like, well, I don't know what was going on. You did get Daryl from The Walking Dead, though. Yeah, look at him. I don't even know what happened to him. I like, looked away to my phone for a second and he was gone. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh. I guess he just left. Yeah, you know, sometimes um, back then you don't have value. <laughs> yeah, I would have been, uh, I, I would have liked if we focused more on like the building our party and adventuring out into the, you know, into the ship. Maybe if we had been more explicit about these party members having skills or whatever. Um, we have the, the not quite silent guy, but non-English speaking sort of fighter type dude. And you've got your rogue chick. I love her. Yeah. Um, I guess the main character is supposed to be some sort of artificer or whatever. I thought the last guy was the wizard. He was, he was crazy yeah. enough to be the wizard. I think he was trying to eat them at some point. I don't know. This was made today. Ben Foster would have been played by Jack Wade. <laughs> that boy when we're running around. Yeah. Instead, we just had his dad. Yeah. Um, also, how did he even learn the history? Well, it's because somebody on the bridge himself <laughs> asked himself about it, and then that's why we got the exposition history. Yeah. Like, where did that mural come from? What does he? Who well, is he, he and he, what does he know? He did get that last little uh, transmission. He played it for them. Yeah. So he knows that they're the last. I guess. Also, I like how the, the Earth just disappeared. Like, it's gone. Well, the, the planet is physically gone. It started out telling us, like, oh, resources are getting lower each year or whatever, and then 
They're like, space mission, send a, send people off, and then... Yeah, yeah, sure, dude. I did like the flashbacks of, uh, you know, Ben Foster with the mask and everything, like, mm -hmm. wandering around. Yeah, you can see the planet's going to shit. Yeah. She left me. Did you go on a ship? Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm Rock. prepared. I watched enough sci-fi. Rock and roll. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they <laughs> just like, no, Earth gone. Yeah. It doesn't, it physically doesn't exist anymore. It happens, you know? If you don't take yeah. care of something, it disappears. Yeah, it's just uh, it's out of here. <laughs> and Foster wakes up, then he wakes up uh, Dennis Quaid, mm -hmm. and then they're on a mission to figure out what's going on, and they get the power fluctuations, so they want to get to the reactor. Mm -hmm. He runs into a hot thieving chick who played the evil chick in Man of Steel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Really, I'm part of the flight crew. Take them off. Shoes. And he runs into his martial arts buddy, who just befriends him because he's cool. Yeah, they're just yeah. kind of chill. Um, yeah, and they form a group, and they deal with these creatures. Mm-hmm. They got some kind of Morlocks running around the ship, cannibal yeah. Morlocks. Cannibal Morlocks. Yeah, apparently, I don't know how... <laughs> we'll just jump to why they exist. Okay. So... Dennis Quaid, when he was younger, mm -hmm. I guess he got Pandora. Yeah. Makes him a little crazy. Yeah. Killed his command crew. Yep. Then started bringing people out of hyperspace to fuck with them. Mm -hmm. And he turned them into like tribalistic people to fight to revive. Somehow, because there's um, like a thing that was getting pumped into everyone's blood. Yeah, some evolve. enzymes. And uh, yeah, there's Because nobody to, knows what evolution means. Yeah. They're supposed to, you know, evolve to survive on the new planet, which looked like it had pretty Earth-like things. I thought they said it had mm -hmm. very Earth-like things, so what? <laughs> what are we evolving for? It was supposed to be very minor, I don't know. I mean, yeah. like, the, the, it certainly, because they were getting the telemetry from it. And I, like, want wow, you to is... taste. I want you to change my taste buds so that these plants taste like pizza to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, this planet looks even earthier than we thought, you know, okay. Yeah, it's a sure. got a beach and sand, come on. Mm -hmm. into these creatures mm -hmm. I just love the taste of human flesh but like yes. honestly if people just tried human flesh they might realize it's pretty delicious if you season it right uh-huh I don't think they had seasonings yeah it's the future Chris it's the future, it's the future. okay they, they had, had seasoning um, there's a guy from agriculture come yeah. on <laughs> yeah yes, that's true I was I was wondering what the hell was going on in that pit outside the reactor there is that, is that the fucking breeding pit they were or just, did they just they like just it because it's warm? Sleeping. They were just yeah. sleeping. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they're warm, yeah. Because I, I was wondering if they were evolving to, you know, interact with the reactor in some way, like feeding off radiation or whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, like, directions. I think that's why I like this movie is because, like, it gave me a lot <laughs> of ideas. Mm-hmm. And it had a lot of ideas, it just didn't follow through with a lot of them. Yeah, I, I'm frequently finding myself more interested in, like, the world building and the lore uh, for these movies than actually what ends up on film. The hell are they? Never quite felt like sticking around to find out. Running is always the best option. They can't be from this ship. Uh, they had a fair amount of good action in it, but unfortunately, again, the way it was shot mm -hmm. wasn't uh, as pleasing to watch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And like even the you know we have this cool sort of repulsor gun and we didn't we didn't get to mess around with it that much just I'm just more bothered by the fact that it like it looks like it just literally slides on your hand like a video game gun or something but yeah. then like every time it got knocked down it would fly right off yeah <laughs> yeah that should be pretty secure I mean you tighten it around the wrist it ain't going off your hand <laughs> yeah. yeah that should be pretty secure um, but like just focus focus on what the cool shit that makes you like we didn't need so many scenes of everyone running through hallways we yeah. could have just there were know, a few yeah why were they expecting like riots because that was a non-lethal riot gun yeah <laughs> yeah that's what it was called i was like what? You, you should go to a new planet like what, the people just get riot <laughs> do we not have lethal guns like for hunting and shit when we get there no guess no, not Stun the alien caribou and eat it. <laughs> yeah. It's a spaceship. Who knows how well those things have evolved? Actually, because it was a plant trilogy, and I was just saying, oh, who cares about a settler thing? We've seen that a hundred times. 
Yeah. But if those things have evolved and they can survive underwater, yeah. then they could get to the surface and you'd have to deal with that. Yeah, then that would be, be an interesting thing. Then they'd sequel. be like the rival tribe yeah. thing and you know, we're doing Morlock. We're doing Morlocks. Yeah. Yeah. Would you? No. <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> Pass. Chris, Chris is a no for Morlocks. Okay. <laughs> no future evolution. Chris does not care about the future no. evolution. No. No. The amount of times we've asked this question in different ways. <laughs> <laughs> I also like how we explicitly had his wife dump him. Yeah. <laughs> like right at the end of the film. Oh. Like, oh, we can totally beg. It was yeah. like he's trying to remember because the uh, crowd sleep messes you up or whatever. And like, yeah. it's taken him like the whole movie to remember and be like, oh yeah, like now I got a wife and this and that. And then like, wait a minute. No, yeah. I don't. <laughs> and like perfect, perfect choice in wife too. If like the world's going to shit, like yeah. blonde, pale girl that might glow in the dark because you don't have the electricity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, then yeah, it's just like, oh yeah, no, she left me, and now I have a flashback of me just walking through the streets, and I enlisted, and that's why I'm here. And be like, and then he looks at her and be like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, all right, yeah. That girl tried to kill me a few times. Yeah, we can hook up. Mm -hmm. Just makes sense, you know. Everybody else is waking up, but they've already chosen. They bonded. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was so greasy and oily in this movie. Hey, like just constantly covered in a layer of slime. That sounds like a complaint. You know, I enjoyed some people being greasy in my life. Oh, like the, the birthing scene of Dennis Quaid's alter ego? No. No? No, I didn't need that. I think that was definitely what they were going for there. He was <laughs> <laughs> just trying I, to which, get under the tubes. Make, that makes sense looking back because, yeah, there's this alter ego re-emerging. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you've seen the metaphor in it. Yeah, it was, there was a metaphor. I saw it. Uh, Quaid eventually stabs himself with the, uh, the tranquilizing, relaxing drugs and mm -hmm. uh, then merges into himself. I was wondering if Dennis Quaid existed, but it turned out that his alter ego was the one that didn't exist or wasn't real. Yeah, <clears throat> that actor's annoyed me in a few movies now, just the way he delivers his lines and he really annoyed me in this one because he was just over the top. He's just like, hey, hey, Woody, you're losing control. I'm not losing control. I'm covered in blood and I killed the command crew. Yeah, that's true. But like, you're out of control because you're shaking a little. I'm like, <laughs> oh, man, just, just fucking kill him. <laughs> Chill out a bit. We can launch ourselves in the pods before the ignition systems are completely dead, sir. That's suicide. We buy a few days. Which is better than what we have left here. They totally did the Event Horizon thing when uh, they get onto the bridge and then it's just like, oh, like, what's going on here? And then Sam Neill's just sitting calmly in the chair and then there's Dennis Quaid just sitting in the dark in the chair. Like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then, then he went crazy again. He's like, Ben Foster, who hasn't really gone crazy much, is, you're going crazy now. And he's <laughs> like, you're right. Like, yeah, <laughs> the thing about is you just tell someone they have it yeah. and they do. Yeah. I think you have that thing. What thing? I don't want to say it. Just fucking say it, Pandora. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> Shit! <laughs> that is a terrifying disease. <laughs> it's like, shut up, shut up. What do you see? Shut what do you see? <laughs> you said it at the state. How? <laughs> That's uh, some editing there. This ship is the sea from which we can create a new world. Shut up! What's up? A new world. Natural state. Raw. What do you see? Beautiful. Perfect. I am offering you the kingdom. It opens the windows and we uh, see darkness and it's like, where are the stars? And that's cool because that's a cool concept because that's happened a few times. In yeah, the yeah. I was wondering if this was going to be like, oh, we're lost between galaxies or we're literally in orbit of the planet already because those yeah. were the only explanations I could think of. And then, no, we crash landed on the planet. Yeah, we you know, I didn't need the jellyfish. Yeah. Because uh, the, the manatee or whatever and the stingray that we were swimming around, that's cool. That, like, kind of makes me think, like, oh, shit, this, they could be in some weird space thing and this thing could be a space. Once they show you the jellyfish, they're like, you've told me now. Come <laughs> on, give me a little bit of mystery. <laughs> Why does this planet have jellyfish? And if I piss on myself, am I still going to be okay? <laughs> How do these jellyfish work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully someone who survives as a biologist or a doctor or something. Yeah. Well, I mean, they had agriculture people. They had agriculture people. <laughs> I'm sure there are some others. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, of course, uh, the one guy that was crazy, um, of course he was a cannibal and he was going to eat them. And I was just like, don't drink that stuff he's making you. He hasn't come down and you're yeah. locked in this area. Like, I wouldn't trust him. Yeah. And then it's just like, oh, he gassed us. You got to have story time, though. He didn't have a thing on to protect himself for gassing them. <laughs> it was really heavy gas. Yeah, I, mean, I guess it was just let's stay low gas. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Gas doesn't rise, from what I understand. Some of them don't. Uh, yeah? Yeah. It's cheating. Mm -hmm. Damn, your science background. <laughs> Trusting somebody who's just big enough to say anything. Yes, but I'm about to call a stake out of his girlfriend. Mm. Listen to the ship. It's like, don't eat us. And he's like, why? No, I can fix the ship. Mm -hmm. okay. The ship's going to blow up in yeah. an hour? Yeah, <laughs> just an hour. I thought he was going to be like an hour, a week, a year. I don't know. Yeah. Um, that was then, very specific. And then like, <laughs> Judging by the way everything's vibrating, I'm going to say about 57 minutes. Yeah, he, yeah. He's, well, he was like an hour. And then Quaid's is like, hey, kid, yeah, 50, or 47 minutes. 47. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like, um, shit. <clears throat> Bro, wow. this kid's good at guessing things. All right. Guess he is the engineer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're breaking through. How long do you think it's going to take? Ask him. He knows. <laughs> yeah. He knows. He things. figures it all out. Uh, the water breaks because, you know, he shot a panel and chipped the window because that's how shit the windows are in spaceships. It's like a 5,000 year old window at this point. Yeah, but like, what if an They have the clock counting Ooh. up like the years in transit instead of just displaying that. Yeah. <laughs> it was just like, like, I think it got to like. You want an there. answer? Well, you're going to have to wait as we start counting. Wait. Yeah, this is the. <laughs> Suspense is building 927 yeah. years. <laughs> of an asteroid just ding <laughs> yeah if there's any kind of micro fracture you have to have deflectors mm -hmm. like i know like mostly just star trek has deflectors but like mm -hmm. yeah, you gotta have them i think i've seen we've seen some sci-fi with like there's just sacrificial plating in front of the ship or something like for something for something of this era of humanity it's like yeah we don't have fucking shields but i can stick like a <laughs> like a five foot thick piece of steel or something on the front of it yeah. Well, I mean, go back to Star Trek Four. How thick does the glass need to be to stop? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Plexiglass. You could throw stuff. It's not gonna chip and shatter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Though it still does break when I watch hockey games. I saw one break with a ball the other day. It was amazing. Oh, wow. Slap shot. Shh, perfect spot. <laughs> so, yeah, they jump in the water and they're just like, ah, get into this tube thing. And they get in there and they, they launch themselves mm -hmm. and then get to the surface. And a bunch of other people have done that now. Yeah. Uh, ships at Hall Bridge. I'm yeah. going to see you back. Yeah, you just stand up and be like, do you nerds want to build a society? Yeah. Dude. Society's gonna be lit. Dibs on the beach. Yeah. Just relax. <laughs> That's on where the I beach. live. And then the creatures come out of the water and mm -hmm. eat you. We've been here for five minutes and I'm immediately establishing property ownership. <laughs> I own this one. They did do the flashback where they were talking about another ship that, like, where they had Pandorum and the guy's just like, I'm crazy, I'm going nuts, he jacked everybody into space. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> kind of horrifying. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, their pops have to have air for a while, right? Yeah, and then you get to suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you might wake up, you might not. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hope you don't. Yeah. Drove him insane. He became convinced that the flight was cursed. Evil. What did he do? He evacuated the ship. Final thought me. Um, this one was mid. This movie was kind of mid. If you're super into, um, I guess, other works uh, made by made by this guy, you might check it out. If you're super into horror sci-fi, there's probably worse things out there. Um, but there are. Would you like me to show you? <laughs> That's part of the <laughs> exercise here, isn't it? Isn't that, that part of the exercise? Um, but no, there wasn't anything here that grabbed me too much. Um, I did think the twists were well executed. That was pretty cool. Um, but most of the film leading up to that, um, it didn't particularly grab me. Yeah. Like I said, I was I was entertained by the acting, um, the action, even though the camera shooting, again, 
Um, yeah, it's cool to, to bring on like a veteran actor and like Dennis Quaid into a sci-fi. When you look back at some of the actors that you like, it's like, huh, how come you've never done a sci-fi? Mm -hmm. God damn it, there's so many of them that haven't. Let's get out in space, be a captain of something. Yeah, that's Christ neat. Sakes. It's cool. Yeah, fight aliens. There's, what is better? Every, <laughs> everybody should be a captain on a sci-fi at some point. Yeah. It's a liberating feeling. It is. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I still enjoy this, but no, I'll wait a while before I watch it again. <laughs> <laughs> As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you next week.